I thought about naming this Imperfect Families. Because although we would like to memorialize our families uh, by saying they're perfect, we all know they're not. They're flawed. Uh, and if you do genealogical research and family history, one of the great dangers is that you are disillusioned if you spend enough time listening to the stories that are told about your ancestors. Then I thought of another name that probably was a better title for what I'm going to do today. Ordinary people and their extra, extraordinary lives. So, as you know, I spent much of my life writing about working class and poor whites, uh, textile mill workers, pole wood workers, coal miners, uh, steel workers, uh, tenant farmers, recreating history from the bottom up rather than creating history from the top down, which is the way it's normally done. So I spent most of my life working on my own families and my wife's families and families like them from across Alabama. And so they're ordinary people, but their lives are not at all ordinary. Every one of their lives is extraordinary, different from everyone else's life. Now you examine your family lives, uh, process them by name, by who, when they were there, when they died. If you process them, uh, you will probably con conclude that uh, it is one, th one thing to judge a person. It is altogether a different thing to try to understand them before you judge them. So uh, the issue is not your judgment, because that's easy enough to do, because everybody makes mistakes. But the question is, can you process your judgment or your judgmentalism through the, the prism of understanding how they got to be where they are? You know, blended families where you've got a common law marriage and bastard children and, and a father uh, who hangs himself and, and you've got a valedictorian from Mignon High School and a salutatorian. Uh, and they all come from the most ordinary of ordinary people. Uh, and here's what I would suggest you might think about this. That ordinary people are not ordinary in any sense whatsoever, nor are you ordinary, nor is anyone ordinary. You're, you're extraordinary in some way, for some purpose, it has some meaning if you understand a life. There is no such thing as an ordinary person because we're just all different. And so to say someone is extraordinary suggests that they're outside the realm of our expectation of what a human being is. Not really. That is, each one of you is as extraordinary as you can possibly be. 